Hello everybody, this is Chess Gym TV and today we're going to be going over the London System Critical Variation with Bishop F5. We're going to be going over a few parts with it. So let's look at this. Let's see what happens. D4, Knight F6, Bishop F4, D5, E3, C5, C3, Knight C6. And here the important move is Knight D2, not Knight F3 because then you run into a lot of nasty problems. Let's see, Knight D2 is the main move. And now, bishop f5, this is the critical variation of the London system. This is one of the most critical variations there is, the one of the most dangerous, so it's important that white needs to know what to do against this. And here in our study, we are recommending the very good, aggressive, and sharp move, queen to b3. This is immediately attacking b7 and putting pressure on um, the queen's side. And as you can see by the arrows, black has three main moves here. There's queen b6, queen c8, and queen d7. There are also other moves like knight a5 and b6, which we have also covered in the study, but those are not as important as the queen moves. First, let's go over queen b6. And this is probably one of the more common moves that you will see. So queen b6, facing off queens. And now here, black is threatening to play the move c4 and get a very good position. For example, if white just ignores this and plays knight f3, then black has to deal with c4, and after the forced move, queen takes b6, a takes. This is a very disaster position for white. Um, they're, they're, uh, this bishop and this rook are super active, putting pressure on the queen side. Black has total control of the center. White's never ever going to be able to get e4 in, and these b pawns, double pawns, are going to rush down the board and attack this pawn chain and completely eliminate it. So this is uh, why we have to avoid black getting the move c4. So that's why instead of knight f3, we take the c5 pawn. That's eliminating their strong c pawn. And now, after the queen trade, at first sight, it does look like e5 is allowing black to get a very superior center, and it does. After bishop g3 and bishop takes c5, black's got a very pretty setup here. It's like a golden moose or bull setup. It, it, it looks like black is certainly better here, but on further analysis, with the move knight f3, white is able to generate a lot of counterplay against the center, against the center pawns e5 and d5, especially e5. But let's look. So here, obviously, black has two moves to defend the c5 pawn. They can also push this pawn forward, but in that case, you certainly get the juicy square on e4 and a bunch of other pluses, like the pawn structure becomes fixed. Let's look at that. e4 is another main line. Uh, what can we do? Here, actually, engine is suggesting b4. If you, don't, if you don't like b4, then you can just play knight d4, but yeah, I do like b4. Looks good. Say so bishop b6, b5, continuing this pawn thrust, knight d7, and now knight d4, and white has just got this huge knight on d4, and the pawn structure is fixed in the center. White's, white must be way better here, and even if those b, even if you don't like those b pawn pushes, then you can just go with knight d4. Actually, I would, I would, I would do those B pawn pushes because now if you don't do those then you might run into trouble on this B4 square. So just do that and then put the knight on D4. That white is way better there. So now let's look at the main alter the main ways for black to defend this pawn. First let's look at bishop D6, which is the more common move by far. Bishop D6 and now we play bishop b5, so we're attacking this knight, thus threatening the pawn on e5. So black has to take resources here. Black has to play knight d7 and protect this e5 pawn one more time. And now we have this brilliant move knight d4. And at first sight, it just looks like a flashy move that doesn't really accomplish much. But, okay, first of all, we're threatening this knight. We're threatening... So black must take this. Black must take this knight with something. Now, if black takes the knight with the knight, 
then this allows white to get a very good position after e takes d4. White is going to win material here because we're threatening this e5 pawn right now. See, we're threatening it. So black protects it with f6, and now we castle. And the rook is just simply coming to this e-file to attack this pawn one more time. And as an illustration, if king comes to f7, then we attack the pawn again with the rook. And after black defends it, knight f3. And there's so many builders, attackers on this e5 pawn that black's just going to lose it. Black is going to lose a pawn here. And we're threatening that knight on d7. So, it, so black is going to lose a pawn here. For example, it doesn't matter anything black does, like rook e7. Then we can just take that knight and take the pawn and take the pawn. And we're just simply a pawn up here. So that, and also if black tries to move e4, then this is not good because knight h4. And as you can see, the two pieces are hanging. And if white, black tries to eliminate this, then we can take that bishop on f5. And again, the two pieces are hanging. So black is, white, black is just going to lose a piece here. So that clears up capturing on d4 with the knight. Now let's look at the correct move pawn taking with the pawn. Now we see the whole point of why white played knight d4 in the first place. We can take that bishop on d6. And now black can give white an isolated pawn with d takes and f takes. And at first sight, and white does have this isolated pawn here, but white can easily support the pawn with king f2. And the bishop, white has a bishop pair. And this knight is going to f3, and then it's going to sit on this juicy d4 square. Black has weaknesses too on d4 and d5. And white has the bishop pair, as mentioned earlier. So this position is clearly better for white. Even though white has a weak pawn on e3, black has one on d5, and white has the bishop pair. So this is clearly better for white. So now, so that clears up all the moves with bishop d6. Bishop d6 right here. It's not the greatest move. It is not the greatest move here. Now let's look at the better move, knight d7. And this has, this allows black more options. For example, if white tries to transpose with bishop b5, this would transpose if black played bishop d6, but the point is now black has the move f6. And now black is actually better because they have a huge pawn center, that, that, and this bishop is is shut down out of the game, and the d5 pawn is always going to be able to be supported, and white white's, th these two pieces are completely shut down. So that is why we do not play bishop to b5, and instead we play the move b4. So we're attacking this bishop, and the nice thing about this is that it forces black to play a certain move. It ha black has to play bishop to d6, supporting the e5 pawn. Anything else, and white's going to play b5. For example, let's look at this. Bishop to b6 is a blunder, because after b5, uh, white is just attacking this knight, and the e5 pawn is going to fall. So that doesn't work. Black has to play bishop d6. And now this bishop is kind of past, it, it's, it's supporting the center, yes, but it is kind of blocked off. And now we have two different moves here. There are two different moves suggested by different engines. And they both have their merits with human possibilities too. Let's look at knight d4. Knight d4 uh, here. If black takes it with the pawn, then we can take on, bis on bishop g6, and after takes, takes, we have the very similar position. It's almost identical to the position we had earlier in the bishop d6, where we have the bishop pair. Both sides have their isolated pawns, but white has the bishop pair, and the knight is going to d4. So this is clearly better for white. So this time, black doesn't want to take the pawn on 
the night on before with the pawn. Now it is very good for black to take with the knight. And after the force reply cap recapturing, uh, now it is pretty unclear here. We haven't ex exactly found a very good system for white here. But an example line can be f6. And now after bishop e2, king f7, castle, let's say castle, rook e8, rook to a5 is very interesting. Also knight f3 is just a normal move here. Putting pressure on the e5 pawn. Putting pressure on the pawn. a6, and now rook a5, and we are putting pressure on this d5 pawn and a lot of pressure on this e5 pawn. So you can see black has the center pawns, but it's like a Grunfeld defense. We are attacking these pawns with our pieces, and that is very important, and eventually we are going to be able to get some advantage out of this. So that is all the moves, the theory after this queen b6 move. This queen b6 move is quite popular, but with proper play, white can get an advantage after this move. So I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for our upcoming videos on what to do after queen to c8 and queen to d7. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.